was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Let's go to the Lord in prayer just a moment. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this evening. God, I, I ask you right now, Lord, to empower me, to, uh, to speak through me tonight. Father, I pray that, that you would do the work tonight, Lord. You would do the preaching. Father, I can do nothing of my own. I need you every second that passes. Father, I pray you would deal with the hearts that are out there tonight that are lost without Jesus. Father, draw them to yourself tonight so they may be saved. And God, I pray for the Christian that is out of your will tonight. Father, I pray that you would just bring them home tonight. Father, that they can be reconciled again to you, Father, and they would... Enjoy the joy of the Lord tonight. And Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your word. We ask you to bless it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we open up the, the 37th chapter of Ezekiel in the Valley of the Dry Bones, one of my favorite passages of Scripture in all the Bible because it shows us the power of God, the purpose of God, shows us the plan of God that is involved in salvation, uh, shows us how that you and I, we are powerless without Him. There is nothing that can happen in the salvation process says, if God doesn't come to us, if God doesn't bring the breath, if God doesn't bring the Spirit, uh, there is nothing that can occur. I want to show you tonight uh, uh, what, what we're looking at here in Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel was living in a time when the people of, of Judah and Israel, they were in captivity, they were in exile away from their homeland. Ezekiel was a priest, but he was not living in Jerusalem. He was living in Babylon. He was far from home. He was leading a people who were, who, who were used to things uh, being uh, being outside of the will of God. They were used to sinning. They were used to doing things their own way. They were used to not going to the temple. Uh, things were much different for Ezekiel and his, and his people that day than, than for most in his past. And so as we see Ezekiel here, he's far from home. And he is given the task of preaching and prophesying to the people. He's not only a priest, but he's called as a prophet of God. Amen. And God has sent him, and God picks him up. He says here in the first verse that the hand of the Lord was upon him, and he carried him out in the spirit of the Lord and set him down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. Now, friends, you and I know that, that there are places that we desire to go. There are places that we want to be. And I would guarantee you that on the top ten vacation list is not a valley that is full of dry bones. Nobody wants to think about death. Nobody wants to think about destruction. Nobody wants to think about devastation. And, and certainly Ezekiel did not. Ezekiel was a priest. He was used uh, to going through elaborate uh, uh, ceremonies. He was used to, uh, to washing his hands several times a day. Uh, he was not going to do anything that would cause him to become unclean ceremonially. But here, God placed him in the midst of a valley of dry bones, which signified death. Everywhere he turned, everywhere he looked, he was facing death. Can you imagine what he was looking at now? As he was gazing upon this site that God had led him to. God, it says God set him down in the midst of the valley. He wasn't on the edge looking down in the, into the valley. God set him right in the middle. You can imagine what it was like. He was there and he was trying, probably trying really hard not to step on anything, not to break anything. Friends, I want to tell you, if you're in a place of death, you can feel that. You, you experience that. Several years ago, about 20 years ago when I was in the service, I uh, took, a, took a trip for a few days over into Poland. And uh, one of the places that we went to was the, uh, the concentration camp at Auschwitz. Most people know what Auschwitz was. It was a death camp. It was a place where people uh, went, they thought they were going to work, and they actually went to die. They were executed there by the Nazis. And when I was there as a lost man, when I went into that place, I entered through the gate uh, and, and went into the, 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 the dorms that the people lived in and walked out through the field and you could feel the death all around you. It was just something, there was something that was foreboding there. It was eerie feeling there. You could feel the death and certainly as Ezekiel was here and all he could see for miles was just bones that were piled up. He probably had the same feeling. He probably felt like it just disgusting and terrible and horrible and he wondered, why did God bring me here? Why is it that God brought me in a place like this? But friends, in reality what God was doing, God was giving him a picture of how God saw the people of Israel. He was bringing bringing Ezekiel to a place where Ezekiel could see people just the way that God did. Yeah. Friends, I want to tell you tonight, 
that as Christians, if we do not see with the eyes of God, if we don't see people that way, we can never love them with the heart of God. There is no way that we can ever have a burden for people that are lost if we don't see them as God sees them. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter number 2, beginning in verse number 1 and also verses 4 and 5, that, that we are dead in our sins and trespasses. That is the state that we're in without God. We are dead. And so we could just as easily uh, be, be uh, thinking about Ezekiel as he was in the valley of dry bones and God was saying, this is my people Israel. This is the way I see them. It's just like us walking around today. Uh, you go in the, into the stores. You can go into Walmart. Uh, you can drive around the shopping center, drive up down the road. Everywhere you look, you see people that are dead in their sins and trespasses. You see them there. It's just like we're living in, in a city, in a county, in a nation of dry bones because there are people without Jesus all around us. Uh, death is everywhere. And, and friends, that's not a very pretty picture tonight. But friends, I want to tell you that we have an answer to the death problem. We've got an answer to the sin problem. His name is Jesus. He's the only one uh, that can bring life. He's the only one uh, that has uh, anything that he can do to help us. I want you to see the valley of bones tonight. And when Ezekiel was looking here, he was seeing an impossible situation. It's just like you could see the banner that was raised up over the valley. It was impossible situation. There was nobody that can do anything to change the situation, these bones. It says that there were very many. There was a lot of those bones. There, as far as the eye could see, there were, there were bones. And he says they were very dry. Yeah. It, the, the destruction just didn't happen the day before. It didn't just happen a week or a month. Before. This was something that had happened and, and been going on for